So this is the motherboard tray that we removed earlier. This is our motherboard. And the next thing we need is the uh, CPU block, which comes in a box looking like this. The CPU block itself looks like this guy. So the first thing we're going to do is to install the CPU itself. We're demonstrating this on an X79 board um, and the procedures are a little different depending on the type of CPU, the type of motherboard and all that stuff. So make sure to consult your manual to make sure that you are installing your CPU correctly. So on X79, what we're going to do is first unclip the two clips. And this is similar for X99. And then we should be able to get the socket open. We should be able to put, you'll see this socket is way messed up. But that's okay, it's a dead board. We're going to put our chip in. We're going to line it up the right way because you can put a chip in the wrong way. And then we're going to take off the cover and we're going to latch it back down. And bear in mind with these two latch CPU sockets, there is an order that matters. So make sure you do it right. So we've put the CPU in the next part is to do the water block itself. So with the water block comes instructions which are important and you should read them. You'll see they're quite detailed and they show you the general construction of the water block and various inserts you can put and how to change it for AMD. Obviously the demonstration here is for Intel um, but I will kind of show you what you're doing if you want to do it for AMD instead. So, so this part is optional if you have an Intel chip. You don't have to take the block apart. However, if you do want to optimize performance slightly for an extra degree here or a couple of degrees, uh, you do want to take this block apart in order to switch out the various jet plates depending on what exact chip you're installing it on. If you do have AMD, you will need to swap out this mounting um, plate. So to do all of this, you see there's a sticker on the back here. We're not going to completely remove this just yet. We're going to peel back these corners just to expose the screws. There are four screws, one on each corner. And then we're just going to undo these screws. Once all four are done, you can then remove the copper base, like so. And you'll notice that there's mill channels in the middle here, and there's a black O-ring around the edge. The black O-ring may be stuck inside here. So if you want to just change this for AMD, you're going to lift this part off, and you're going to swap it with this one. However, seeing as we're going to, with Intel, we're not going to do that. If you want to change the jet plate, you can see this is the jet plate here. You can remove it. And if you also want to change the insert, the instructions will tell you exactly which insert you need. You can also pull that out there. And which additional channel piece you can use there. We're going to leave it as it is for now. Um, you can see there it comes with this replacement one that happens to be clear. If you want to know which one is which, they have little text on them. Um, the camera won't focus on it, but right where this finger is tapping, there's a little text. And on this one, it says I2. And on this one, it says I1. So that helps you decide which one you need. So we're going to put this back together. So that piece slotted in there. Um, and then we're just going to put that back and you're going to make sure it aligns right. And the way to do that, you see that this exit port 
it says out on the other side. It's a clean path there, so that should be easy to see there. You're then gonna mount the jet plate on top. With the jet plates, they don't say on them which is which. You have to feel the thickness, or sometimes you can tell by the shape, some of them have different cutouts. Um, then you make sure your mounting bracket is on there. You're gonna make sure your O-ring goes in the little gap there between the mounting plate and the top. And the most important part of this is the alignment. The channels go in one direction and there's a slit here. And the slit wants to be perpendicular to the channels. If you have the slit parallel to the channels, only a few of the channels are gonna get water. It's very important, very, very, very important that you mount this copper plate the right way. You want the channels perpendicular so that all the channels are going across the jet plate so that every channel gets water. So you're gonna put that on there. You're gonna line up the holes and you're gonna take your screws and you're gonna put them back down. You're not gonna tighten yet. You're just gonna go 90, you know, 95% of the way. Once you've done them all 95% of the way, you can then just go around each one in turn just getting them tighter and tighter until you're happy with the firmness. You should see, once you're done tightening, essentially no gap or small gap in between the metal base and the um, the mounting bracket. So the block should now be sealed again. We're gonna go through the block mounting process on X79. Like I said, every chip has a slightly different mounting process, so make sure you read the instructions to make sure you're doing it right. On X79, you wanna make sure your chip's in there. And the nice thing about X79 is there's no rear plate the socket, these mounting posts go right into the socket itself or the back plate on the board. With other sockets such as uh, non Ivy Bridge, well not, not Ivy Bridge, I mean not X79 or X99, every other socket requires you to put a mounting plate, let me get it out for you. There are these mounting plates in the box. And those would have to be mounted on the back here. But because X79 already has that attached to the board, we don't need to do this. So it makes us our life easier. So we're gonna attach the four posts. You can see one, two, three, four, one on each corner. And then we can take the supplied EK uh, Gillette Extreme 10. I'm going to take that out of its wrapper here. And there's a bunch of ways to apply tim. The amount of tim also depends on the size of the chip. With a chip like this that's very large, generally I apply a pea-sized amount for something like a 4790K, that's a small chip. I would say you want a small P. Um, for something like X2011, you want a pretty big P. Just gonna put that in the center there. You're gonna take your CPU block, you're gonna remove the sticker. And you can mount it whichever way you want. There is a slight performance hit. Um, 
depending on which way round you go. For X79 and X99, I believe you're better off putting the block in this direction with the ports like that. You're then going to take your bag of pieces and you're going to take a, a spring, put it on each corner. And then a thumb screw. And you're just going to screw it on until it just grips on each corner. Some of these may have washers stuck in the bottom of them. Okay, so once all four are on and just gripping, you're going to take opposite corners like this, and you're going to do two turns on each and switch to the opposite corners. Same again. Keep switching back and forth. And that gives an even pressure to the mount. And with all of these thumb screws, you can actually tighten them pretty much until you run out of thread. Um, if you do get nervous and want to stop early, that's okay, you can always tighten them up more later. Just double check your temperatures are okay once you're done. So the CPU block is now mounted. Now we can go ahead and add some fittings to it. Again, these ones are just the regular compression fittings. And the CPU block is now mounted. What I would then do is mount this to the motherboard tray. And we're going to do that real quick. There are nine screws generally on an ATX size board like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All nine screws are going to get screwed into the motherboard tray. Again, these screws, you're not going to do them super tight initially. You're just going to go ahead and put them in quite loosely. And that means if you have any alignment problems, you're not going to put any stress on anything. I usually do the outer corners first in order to make sure every corner is aligned. And if the corners are aligned, then the middle is aligned. Okay, so now all nine screws are in. Uh, we can go ahead and tighten them all down. And at this point, I would also add your memory. Uh, with your memory, we're just going to demo installing two, two sticks. Uh, you want to make sure that you put them in the right slots. If you're not filling every slot, there's a chance that you might have put them in the wrong slot. So make sure to consult your motherboard manual to see which slots you should put your memory in. Open up the memory slot mounts. Uh, some motherboards, these will open at both ends. In this case, this board doesn't. It only opens at one end. And you're going to put the stick in. Align both sides. When you're happy with the alignment, you're just going to push down and it should lock into place and you'll see that this, uh, no, this one, you see that clip has moved in while the other ones are still open. Like I said, we're just going to mount two sticks for this demonstration. But you want to put in all the sticks that you're going to put in at this point. Now that we've done this, we can then add this to the case. Um, if you have water blocks on your graphics cards, this would be the point at which you want to add those water blocks to the graphics cards.